In this video, I'm gonna give you six workflow tips to help you edit images quickly in Lightroom. I'll also be showing you the benefits of editing consoles like the Loop Deck, but don't worry, these tips are gonna translate regardless of whether you're using a keyboard or an editing console. Let's jump in to tip number one, which is to shoot in manual mode. Now this in-camera step is critical because we want each of our images to be lit and shot identically. This is what enables us to do batch processing in any raw processing application. So whether you shoot engagements, family, studio portraiture, if you're doing conceptual work with flash, you're doing weddings and everything in between, what we wanna do is make sure that we're always shooting in manual mode and that also includes your flashes. So the goal is consistent exposures and only change those exposure settings when the lighting condition or when the scene changes. Tip number two, process by scene or lighting condition. There are many ways to do this and I'm gonna show you my two favorites. So select an image and you can go ahead and process it however you like. I'm going to select the Visual Flow soft light preset just as an example, and I'll adjust my exposure, temperature, and contrast to my taste, and now we're good to go. From there, I want you to select all the images that are shot in that same lighting condition. Then press Control shift s to bring up the sync panel. From there, we can select all of the developed settings that we want synchronized and press OK. Now I'm going to show you another way and I'm going to show you how Loop Deck can make it even more simple. So this is a scene that had a natural green tint from the window light that's on the right side. So what I'm going to do is start with this green tinted preset which adapts the scene for that lighting condition. We're going to adjust our tint a bit, get to a decent kind of white balance and I might just adjust the exposure down a little and maybe a little bit less contrast. Now with that, I can actually go back and select, and I'm gonna go ahead and just show the film strip here so you can see what's gonna happen. I'm gonna hold down function and then press the up arrow to select all the images within this scene. And from there, I can press copy and paste to just drop in all the development settings on every image. So now, if I did actually switch back to the grid view so you could see, well, you would see that every one of these images now has that preset now applied to it and we can make small incremental adjustments as we go from image to image or just call it good. Tip number three is to create presets based on lighting conditions. So this one is huge because presets are inherently limited in their functionality because we're constantly shooting in different lighting conditions. So if you're using your own presets, great. What I want you to do is to take those presets and adapt them to each lighting condition that you typically shoot within. This is what we've done on the professional side with visual flow development tools, where each preset pack that we've designed has been statistically tested to adjust that color engine back to the appropriate look based on the lighting condition that you're shooting in. So if you're working in a high dynamic range scene, you're gonna select the HDR option. It's gonna dial in all of the color and contrast adjustments to get the images right with one click. Likewise, if you're working in a tungsten or that kind of indoor orange scene, select tungsten as a lighting condition and it's gonna automatically adjust your colors to fit. By using or creating your own custom lighting condition based presets, you can significantly reduce your time in editing. Now tip number four is to assign your most used presets a shortcut. And this is where you will need some sort of editing console since unfortunately Adobe hasn't yet built this functionality into Lightroom, but we are hoping cross our fingers. So Loop Deck software makes this easy and all we need to do is select the preset and assign it to one of the P1 through P8 buttons. So what we've done is actually assign P1 through P8 to our most used lighting conditions. Now, whenever I arrive at a new scene with a different lighting condition, I simply select the preset for that lighting condition and continue working. This is the power of lighting condition based presets in combination with an editing console. There are other editing consoles out there, so feel free to choose your own. We prefer the Loop Deck because of the software's simplicity and just the way that it works. With this done, if I land on a soft light scene, I would select soft light with that P1 button. Or if I'm in a hard light scene that's lit with hard sunlight, I'm just gonna select P2. So you can assign these shortcuts to any of the presets that you've created or installed. 
Tip number five is to use the mouse minimally and when you are adjusting sliders, rather than pulling the sliders up and down, I'd rather you mouse over the slider and use the up and down arrows. Up and down by itself will make small incremental adjustments while pressing shift up and down will make larger adjustments. Now this is again where an editing console like the Loop Deck would shine because this allows us for quick and smooth adjustments without ever having to move our mouse over to the developed settings. I can even tweak my HSL directly from the console. So that means if we have a well-designed set of presets, you should only require that you basically, well, click that preset, then adjust temperature, tint, contrast, and exposure right from your editing console and never have to jump into the sliders on the right side. Another benefit of the Loop Deck is it allows us to edit in full screen mode, allowing the image to take up the entire presence of the screen. We don't need our sliders to be visible since we have them right on the keyboard. Just remember that sometimes this full screen mode can cause your machine to slow a bit. And if it does, I would suggest using the no panel view by pressing shift tab to shrink all the Lightroom panels without going to that full screen view. Number six is I want you to assign the common local area adjustments that you would do often to an actual development preset. So you can save local area adjustments to a preset, but we want them to be generic enough for regular use. So let me give you an example. We're often doing a radial burn on our images. And so what we're gonna do is assign a radial burn to a preset and we're gonna set that burn directly in the center of the preset so it's, well, universal enough. We're gonna save this out as a development preset and whenever we get to a new image, we can press that radial burn preset which will drop that burn right back into the center. Now from the keyboard, we can press Shift M to select the radial burn tool to move it into place or bonus tip, if we're working on the loop deck, we can assign or use the L1 or L2 keys to choose our radial filter tool. Then from there, we can simply adjust it up and down and hold the Alt or Option key while dragging the mouse over the tool to control the burn. Now we have a local adjustment that we would frequently do on a lot of images saved out to a preset so it automatically drops it in instead of running through the menu and doing it manually each time. I'm hoping you guys can take these tools and techniques to improve your editing workflow so you all can spend less time in front of your computer and more time behind your camera. I hope you guys liked this video and if you did, show us by giving us a thumbs up Subscribe to the channel for more content and tutorials. And uh, well, let us know what you think in the comments below. My name is Pi and I'll see you guys in the next video.